welcome to vmware vsphere basic networking tutorial in this module you're gonna learn vsphere standard switch you are watching the second session of vmware vsphere standard switch in the first session we covered what is a vmware vsphere standard switch and how to set up a vmware vsphere standard switch in the second session we're gonna see what are the further configurations that you can set up in a vSphere standard switch that is network switch and port policies NIC teaming and load balancing different load balancing options we're going to discuss here and what are the failover and failback method and finally about traffic shaping so now you have a very good idea on how to install and set up any XSI host how to create a vSwitch so go to the V switch that we created in the previous session, then go and click on edit settings. Here you see there is link discovery, security settings, NIC teaming and traffic shaping. In the previous session we didn't discuss about any of this. So in this session we're going to discuss about these settings and we're going to see how to configure it. Let's start from link discovery. Link discovery is a feature that uses Cisco discovery protocol CDP to gather and send information about connected switch ports that can be used for networking troubleshooting. So different ways to grab uh, physical switches or virtual switches information are listen mode, advertise mode and both mode. So these three what shown in the drop down list to configure link discovery. In the listen mode, EXSI host detects and display information about the associated Cisco switch port, but information about the vSwitch is not available to Cisco switch administrator. That is what happened in listen mode. When you select advertise mode, EXSI host makes information about the switch available to Cisco switch administrator, but does not detect and display information about the Cisco switch. In both mode, EXSI host detects and display information about the associated Cisco switch and make information about the vSwitch available to Cisco switch administrator. So depending on your network and virtual environment, you can choose any of this option. Next is about security policy. When you expand security tab, you see there is a promiscuous mode, MAC address changes and fork transmit. Let's start from promiscuous mode. Promiscuous mode is a security policy which you define at the virtual switch or you can define to port group level also in any XSI. So when you install a virtual machine, the virtual network adapter receive only frames that are meant for it. This is common. When you enable promiscuous mode, the guest network adapter receive all frames passed on the virtual switch that are allowed under the VLAN policy. So this can be useful for intrusion detection monitoring or if a sniffer needs to analyze all traffic on a network segment. The next security policy that we have to discuss is MAC address changes and forge transmit. So all the virtual machine uh, have two MAC address. One is initial MAC address and the second one is effective MAC address. By default, this initial MAC address and effective MAC address are same. So initial MAC address is a MAC address generated automatically and that you see in the configuration file. The effective MAC address is the MAC address configured by guest operating system during the communication with the other system. So initial MAC address is what you found in the .vmx file and the guest operating system use a MAC address for communication that is effective MAC address. By default, these two MAC addresses are same. However, you can change this in the guest operating system. The ability to change the effective MAC address cannot be removed from the guest operating system, but you can stop this function by enforcing security policy at vSwitch level or port group level. So if the MAC address change option is set to reject, then traffic will not be passed through the virtual switch to the virtual machine. It means if you set this option to reject then no incoming traffic is going to be accepted if the initial and effective MAC address do not match. The second option forged transmits option is set to reject means traffic will not be passed from the virtual machine 
to the outside network. And one of the real world scenario where you see a difference in uh, MAC address, initial MAC address and effective MAC address is Microsoft Network Load Balancer Cluster, NLB. So when you have uh, such a configuration in your network, then you need to uh, set up MAC address changes to accept uh, uh, and forge transmit also to accept it to make sure that the communications are uh, going on well. So these are the security options available with vSphere standard switch. The next option in vSphere standard switch is NIC teaming, network interface card teaming. You can connect a single virtual switch to multiple physical Ethernet adapters in a VMware vSphere EXSI. And this feature is called teaming. In this example, we have uh, created a vSwitch with three physical adapters. So this will help us in case of any failure in the network. Uh, the other network cards in the uplink port group will take over the network communication. VMware EXSI provide different load balancing option. The first one is root based on originating virtual port ID. It's like a round robin. For example, you have uh, four virtual machine and three physical adapters for your EXSI server that are assigned to this uh, virtual switch. Then virtual machine A will use VMNIC1, virtual machine B will use VMNIC2 and virtual machine C will use VMNIC3. And the fourth virtual machine, virtual machine D, gonna use again VMNIC1. So these virtual machines are just balanced over the physical network interface and the virtual machine will have uh, its network running on the designated physical NIC. If there is any failure, then this virtual machine will switch the traffic to another uh, physical adapter that is assigned for the same vSwitch. The good thing about this configuration is it is easy to configure. It doesn't need any kind of physical switch configuration in your physical switch connected to the EXSI host. The bad is that, for example, the first virtual machine and the last virtual machine which is connected to VMNIC1 have higher utilization. At the same time, maybe the other virtual machine uh, running on VMNIC2 and 3 may be less utilized. So when it comes to the bandwidth utilization, uh, this is not a good solution, but configuration wise, this is very easy and quick uh, to complete. The next two option is root based on IP hash, which require a physical switch configuration. In this configuration, the traffic flows according to the source IP and destination IP. For example, the virtual machine which is communicating, virtual machine A is communicating with three different IPs, let's say, in between the client and server. The traffic can use all the VMNICs available in the vSwitch in this example. At the same time, let's say the virtual machine B is only communicating with one destination then the traffic is not going to be shared, it just use one network interface. So by this way, this method has a better distribution of traffic across the physical network interface cards. But at the same time, the method has a higher CPU overhead and it is not compatible with all the switches. It requires IEEE 802.3 AD link aggregation support. The next option is root based on source MAC hash. This method provides a more balanced approach to load balancing than uh, originating virtual port ID. So each virtual machine uh, always use a single link, but load will not be distributed. So for example, you have three NICs, the virtual machine use one of it for all the network communication. The good thing about this is this method has a low CPU overhead and does not require any physical configuration for this. The next option is explicit failover order. It is not an actual load balancing. Uh, the virtual switch always use the uplink that stands first in the list of active adapters from the failover order and it passes failover when is, there is any failure on the physical network interface or the connectivity that kind of fail over to the second one in the list. The next option we have in NIC teaming is network failover detection. Network failover detection is a mechanism used to detect a network failure. 
there are two methods available with which your standards which one is link status only that is by default selected which rely on the link status provided by the network adapter so this method can detect failures like a cable pulls or physical switch power failure but one of the problem with this method is it cannot detect configuration error for example wrong VLAN configuration or cable pull on the other side of the physical switch the second option is beacon probing which uh, probes are sent out and listened for all the network interface cards in the team so this method can detect a configuration error or cable pull on the other side of the physical switch one thing to note here is beacon probing should not be used in congestion with IP hash load balancing mechanism The next two options we have here is notify switches and fail back. By default, when a virtual adapter is reconnected to a new path due to any path failure, it will notify the physical switch. This is how by default it is configured. You can see notify switches and fail back are selected by default. Yes. One of the use cases where this should be changed is Microsoft Network Load Balancing is used in a unicast mode. You know in a common that the physical switch maintain MAC address table that they are used to map uh, ports to MAC address. So when a physical network card fails and all the virtual machines are uh, shifted to another uh, physical NIC, in this case notify switch option speed along uh, by sending reverse address resolution protocol frame to the physical switch. So enabling notify switches options will pre-prepare the MAC address table in the physical switch. By this way helps to avoid the physical switch sending packets to find the destination whenever there is a failover happen. The fail back is the next option we have here. So when your standby network interface become operational during any failure and after some time the active network interface become operational then if you set the fail back option yes then this network interface for example the first one are gonna active again and the second one the standby NIC return to being standby so it's a simple option that you can set it up uh, based upon your organization interest the another option in NIC teaming we have here is failover order. You can mark actually which network interface need to be uh, stand as a standby if you don't need all network interface in an active state. So that you can done here, and also you can, and also you can change the position of your network interface by moving up and down. The final part of uh, Vsphere standard switch configuration is uh, traffic shaping. So traffic shaping is only allowed for the outgoing traffic in a Vsphere standard switch that you can configure either at switch level or port group also. The first parameter is average bandwidth by default traffic will get bandwidth what is defined in the average bandwidth. And the second one is a peak bandwidth. So that is the maximum number of bits per second that you allow across a port when it is sending or receiving. A burst of traffic so burst size is the maximum number of bytes to allow in a burst uh, that is allowed to uh, to be transmitted at the peak bandwidth rate in kilobytes so that is all we're gonna summarize the vSphere standard switch here we started from vSphere standard switch then we go through link discovery NIC teaming different load balancing options and we saw how uh, traffic shaping can be done in Vsphere standard switch. And at the end, we uh, saw a demo on how to create a vSwitch also. I hope you all benefited from this video well. And let's continue our journey to vSphere distributed switch in the coming session. Thank you for watching this. See you all in the next video.